welcome to the Casa del Sol. <laughs> Woo! Coming up, we have got some insight to Malaga, Marbella, Torremolinos, Vena Madina, and Neha. Flights land in Malaga Airport, and from here you'll be hiring a car or getting a transfer bus to your resort. However, before setting off to the beach, we really think it's worth spending a day or two in the city. Malaga is the place to go for culture and history, with famous sites such as Alcazaba Fort and Malaga Cathedral spread across the city. Behind me is La Catedral de Malaga, or Malaga Cathedral, and it's an awesome opportunity to just find out about Malaga's culture and history. It only costs five euros, and I'd really recommend it. You're not going to be let down. Last on our must-see list in Malaga is the Pablo Picasso Museum. It just seems to me that if you're in the hometown of Pablo Picasso himself, one of the greatest artists of the 20th century, it might just be worth a visit to check out some of his works. First stop for us out of Malaga is Torremolinos. It's everything you'd expect from a Spanish beach resort with a huge variety of beaches, hotels and activities. La Carihuela would be our pick of the beaches for families with young children, as it's a bit smaller with lots of shade and there's lots of restaurants right on the beach. We found that many of the beaches in Torremolinos were huge and really wide open, none more so than Los Alamos Beach up near the airport. It gets really huge and a little bit sparse, meaning that if you want to get away from the main crowd, you can just enjoy we stayed at the popular four-star Cervantes Hotel, which is just 500 metres from the beach. The thing about this hotel is that it is a product of its time. It was built in the 70s. The decor in the bedrooms in particular certainly reflects that, as does things like the Wi-Fi speed. It's clean, it's quiet, there's plenty of food, even if you don't really know what you want. Um, and it's not actually that expensive. Just three kilometres along the coast, Beno Madna is the next town along from Torremolinos. What we really liked most was the huge amount of activities you can do. And first on our list was to visit the marina. So we've just been around Beno Madna Marina. It was so lovely, lots of bars, restaurants. You've got all the different types of food you could want. It's easy, you can just take your time. And then you've got this side, which is all a bit more relaxed if you want to get away from it all. Next up, beaches. Beaches in Beno Madna are similar to those in Torremolinos. Expect long stretches of sand with sun lounges, shops, restaurants and plenty of things to do. Away from the beaches, the cable car takes you 771 metres to the peak of Mount Calamoro, where you can look down on the whole of the Costa del Sol. Another reason to come to Beno Madna, Mariposario houses hundreds of butterflies and is a great place to take the family to learn all about their life cycle and environments. While in Beno Madna, we stayed at the super popular Holiday Palace Resort Hotel. We're here at the Holiday Palace in Ben Almagna. It overlooks the sea and you've got the gorgeous mountains right behind you, but you'd never really need to leave this hotel because everything is here on hand. There's a huge pool, mini golf, gardens, a kids play area, activities every day, shops and more. The rooms are huge and ours had mini kitchens and balconies. The only real downside for us was the Wi-Fi was quite slow and really expensive. Further west along the coast are Marbella and Puerto Banús. These resorts are where the rich and famous come to holiday, so it's pricey down here. But you'll find some of the Costa del Sol's nicest beaches, clubs and hotels. Marbella has 17 miles of coastline that's split into 24 different beaches, the most renowned of which is the four-mile stretch famously referred to as the Golden Mile. Another thing to bear in mind if you plan to visit Marbella or Puerto Banús are the high prices. Food can be especially costly. For four of us to have one dish and a couple of soft drinks each, it came to 80 euros. It's a pricey one here in Puerto Banús, but if you're coming here, that's what you need to expect. With that said, the shopping in Puerto Banús is not to be missed. The streets around the harbour are where you'll want to go for designer brands and big names. For something a bit more authentic, then head into Marbella's Old Town. What's cute about this place is that it's still very traditional. You've got all these cute little shops, balconies coming out into the square, locals enjoying afternoon late lunches, uh, and tiny winding streets, which is surprising when you have the big money and the commercial scene out on the seafront. It's quite a nice little find. We stayed at the Milia Marbella Banus, which is typical of the more high-end hotels you'll find here. It's really expensive, but you do get what you pay for, as it's a resort hotel in every sense of the word. The food was excellent, there are multiple pools, tennis courts, a kids play area, high speed Wi-Fi that's actually high speed, and they offer tons of excursions and lots more. 
the great thing about this hotel too is that it backs right out onto the beach, which gets a big thumbs up from us. Nerha is the last stop on our guide to the Costa del Sol. About an hour's drive east of Malaga, Nerha is where to come to get away from the tourist resorts and discover the secrets of the Andalusian countryside. The Balcon de Europa is one of the most popular tourist sites in Nerha. It's a viewpoint that gives you some magnificent views of the coastline. Hiking is a popular activity on this part of the Costa del Sol and for the authentic and safest experience, we recommend hiring a local guide. We took a tour with John Keogh's guided walking tours and it was worth every penny. He took us through secret paths, through canyons and along streams and showed us sites that we'd never have seen without him, including some traditional goat herding. As well as hiking, we delved deep into the caves and explored mountainside villages. Of course, there are beaches here too. Our favourite was Buriana Beach, which had a nice mix of touristy convenience while not being too crowded. That's the entirety of the Costa del Sol. Click subscribe and keep watching. Bye! Bye! For more, check out our video on 22 things to do on the Costa del Sol.